Hey, what's going on guys? Today we're taking a look at another retro magazine. This is the Dengaki Hobby magazine issue from August 2008, so 14 years ago now. This issue came out. It's one that I picked up probably at a secondhand store, if I remember correctly, somewhere along the way in my travels in Japan many years ago. It's been in my collection for a while, but I thought it'd be fun in today's video to once again just take a look back and see what was going on in 2008. As you can see, the theme for this issue is Neo Xeon mobile suits. So that'll be what will be kind of the main feature in the front part. But then, of course, like any typical monthly Japanese model magazine, there'll be just a lot of advertisements for what kits were coming out at the time, and then there'll be lots of other advertisements and then just different stuff going on here at the back as well, which will be other a lot of non-Gundam related things and a lot of stuff that I won't necessarily really know a lot about, but we'll just kind of flip through everything. It's a pretty thick one. This issue is pretty good size on the back here. You can see we have an advertisement for the Super HCM Pro Zaku 2, which is pretty cool. But the price for this magazine when it originally came out, 880 yen. So and these days, the current day conversion rate, that's probably around $8 or less. So not too bad a price if you can get it at that price at that time. But anyway, let's go ahead and get right into it here with the Sazabi. So this is, of course, the 100 scale original master grade. This came out before the uh, Sazabi Verka came out. And we fold that out. And we also have the 100 scale full scratch build Shinanju here, modeled by Hiroshi Imizu. And 2008 is right around the time when the Shinanju Verka was coming out, if I remember correctly, but I guess this was before that. And you can really tell, just going back to the cover art here for a minute, I mean, if you're familiar with the Master Grade, you can see just uh, this build, how it is different from the Master Grade. I mean, obviously it's gonna look pretty similar, but the Master Grade Verka definitely has some differences from what we can see here in this full scratch build, but that's pretty incredible, a fully scratch built one. A huge difference you can see here with the backpack. This backpack thruster pod there is much longer here in this build than what you have in any other version of the Shinanju. But it looks pretty incredible. On the back side of that poster, we have the Shin Musha Gundam here. That's also the Master Grade, so that was probably coming out around that time. Again, I'm not sure offhand. I don't remember exactly when that kit came out, but I would imagine it was somewhere around 2008. That probably sounds about right. So this is basically just kind of giving us a preview, just some different things that are going to be coming out again around the time of this release. This looks like a radio-controlled Votoms which is pretty awesome. And then our contents here. So of course, everything's all in Japanese, more advertisements over here on this side for some other things, uh, figures and dolls and all that. Blood of Neo Zeon mobile suits. So here we have the Sazabi and the Yakudogas and some Giradogas here all flying in this scene. So that's uh, model kit photography there, it looks like, pretty interesting. We have some actual history background over here with the One Year War, UC0089 and UC0093, Shara's counterattack there, so history of the progression of Xeon to Neo Xeon and all that, I guess. This is, of course, also before the Master Grade Giradoga was out, so this is just the old 144 scale kit modeled by Keita Yagyu. If you guys have ever built any of those old, old Shara's counterattack kits, they're not too bad as far as old kits go from what I understand, but they definitely are going to take a lot of work. And you can see here, based on some of these work in progress photos here, showing like the before and after on the head. I mean, the head looks amazing. It looks like he's basically just built like the HGUC or something, but considering it's based off of the old 144 scale kit, yeah. Definitely took a lot of work to get it to look as good as it does, but it looks fantastic. Here, the before and after shots are pretty incredible there. It looks like actually what he's done is kit bashed a lot of parts from the HGUC uh, Yakudoga, actually, and then mixed with parts from the Gerudoga 144 scale kit. Over here is kind of interesting, showing some of the other mobile suits of Neo Zeon, and this Sazabi in particular, just like the way that it's kind of detailed up. I know it's going to be kind of hard for you guys to see because it's a smaller photo, but... It's interesting to see how this custom build is detailed and then how you can really see how maybe some of these details made their way into later versions of the Sazabi, like the Sazabi Verka, and then even into the RG, but mostly the Sazabi Verka. And so here it is, this custom build of the original, actually the metallic coating version, it shows the box art down here, the metallic coating version of the original 1.0 Master Grade Sazabi, to be precise. Based on like how glossy the finish is, you kind of tried to preserve a little bit of that kind of metallic finish kind of look for just how glossy it is. Very interesting to see based on more recent versions of the Sazabi that we've got with the Verka and the RG, uh, how rounded and kind of bulbous this design is compared to how the Sazabi has gotten much, much more angular uh, in some of the more recent iterations and just like sharper in detail compared to how round like all the edges and everything look on this. Here's some comparisons over here. The original kit just built up uh, compared to the custom build. 
So yeah, very interesting to see like the, just the different aesthetic of model kits uh, 14 years ago compared to what it is compared to today. This is more work in progress shots. They're also very cool to see a Neo Zeon symbol. There it is with the funnels flying. And here we have Angelo Sopper's custom Gyarados. Let's see, this one is built using what? Oh, this one is also a 1-100 scale scratch build here by Nobuyuki Sakurai. So again, a pretty amazing full scratch build here for this. Of course, this later came out as a HGUC kit, but we have yet to get an actual master grade of this kit so far. So fingers crossed, maybe someday in the future, that could be something that will be coming out. But again, pretty incredible. This is a full scratch build. The details and everything on this look fantastic. Super cool looking. And then the Shinanju. So yeah, like I said, the backpack is the most glaring difference between this. Also, I mean, the back skirt, just, I mean, if you, again, if you're familiar with the master grade, it's pretty obvious to tell right off the bat, like where some of the differences are. But the, that backpack is definitely the most glaring difference for me, just how long elongated those sections are on the backpack. But for the most part, most everything else is pretty close to how it ultimately came out looking with the Master Grade. The torso, I think, is a little bit longer here on this custom scratch build. But I think he nailed it pretty closely. And even though this is not designed by Katoki, this actual model kit, the, the, the Shinenju's design in the anime was I mean, originally designed by Katoki, so that's why the, the model kit, as in like the MG Verka, would look so much similar to this, because basically he's basing this off the anime, but the anime is Katoki's design. I don't know if you guys get what I mean by that. The gun is definitely a little bit though, a little bit different, I can tell. By looking at that, the rifle is a little bit different. It obviously doesn't have uh, some of the different add-on parts like we see with the rifle in different versions of the kit, but again, just basing it off of this Katoki image down here, which is the illustration that was used for the MG Verka, and yeah, the backpack does look, in the illustration at least, kind of a little bit longer than it ultimately did in the model kit, so anyway, it's kind of interesting. Here it is in a little photo down there, and it looks like maybe there's a little bit more of the unicorn, but not too much as the focus is on the Xeon mobile suits, the Neo Xeon mobile suits, but there is the unicorn Gundam there, that is the MG, so I guess the MG unicorn had been out, but the Sa uh, Shinanju, I keep wanting to say the Shinanju, I guess just maybe had not quite come out yet at the time of uh, when he made this. Okay, here, some of the work in progress is pretty revealing. So looking at the frame, it looks like he used for the frame of this the Master Grade Gyan frame, which is pretty interesting. So that's pretty cool. And then used some different parts, obviously, from a few other different kits, most of it being scratch built, though. Here we get some other stuff from Unicorn. So there's the Gundam, the Kshatriya there, of course. I don't know if there's really going to be any Kshatriya stuff in here. We'll have to see. I don't recall. But Shara's counterattack here, Gundam Ace, which is the manga monthly... Uh, magazine, but here's a custom build based off of, so this is the one we were looking at earlier that I was saying kind of the details on it remind me a bit of the Sazabi Verka. This is the Sazabi HGU C kit. That was the basis for this custom build. And just the details done to this kit to, uh, to detail it up is what's kind of a little bit more reminiscent of the more modern kits, more modern design aspects that we've seen gone into the Sazabi, different from how it looked previously. Taking a break from all that Neo Zeon stuff, here's suddenly the Tyran Grounds type. So I guess the 100 scale Tyran Ground type was maybe coming out around that time. Awesome build of that. It's a really cool kit, one that's it's even still to this day a pretty sought after kit anytime it gets reprinted. And just because of the design of it and the details and everything of the 100 scale version of the kit, it's pretty easy to understand why it's pretty sought after. It's a very unique and really nicely detailed kit for sure. This build of it is really nice. It's got some really nice kind of light weathering and nice texturing going on to the armor on that. It does look very cool. You've got a high grade Enact custom here as well, which is another pretty cool uh, mobile suit there. So we got some double O stuff going on. So apparently double O, again, I don't remember this off the top of my head, but I can just guess based on what's featured in here that double O was going on at the time. Because so we also have the space commander type version of the tier in here. This is the HG I was about to say HGC, just HG kit here, of course, HG00. Here's some more 00 stuff. The 100 scale version of the Avalanche Exia was on the way, as well as the HG version of the GNX. Got SD version of the Exia, some mobile suit and action figures here, as well as some character figures, some Trans Am colored version and candy toys of the main Gundams from the line, and some very nice artwork over here of the Exia. Then we got a Gundam Terminal Report for some Gundam Wing stuff. This is also HCM Pro 
figures there from Gundam Wing. And some very interesting stuff here, the Master Grade Zaku Cannon, which was coming out here, it says based off of the Zaku 2.0, that was coming out at the time, and also B Club version of the Desert Zaku, so the B Club resin kit. The Desert Zaku there. Some more B Club stuff over here. Uh, Master Grade version. This would be the Bandai Hobby Pro Shop version of the Master Grade Zaku 2 here in this kind of uh, African desert color scheme there. Got some HG00 stuff. It's kind of teasing to go to page 63 for some more of that. The very cool fixed figuration stuff. The fixed figuration full armor uh, Gundam Mark 3 there, as well as the Psycho Gundam Mark 2, the metal composite version of that. Those are both really cool uh, fixed figuration things. More mobile suit in action, Ben Presto stuff, or HCM Pro Zaku, which is basically what we saw on the back of the magazine. Some more interesting kind of candy toy stuff over here, including this strategy of Gundam Field, which looks to be like an interesting precursor to that base there as to what we would see in more recent years, what they use for like the 30 minutes missions bases. Things like that. Here we go. Got a pretty derpy looking SH figure arts Domo and Kashu there. And advertisement for the upcoming HGUC Camphor at the time. Of course, long been out now, but there's you got your uh, pre production kind of sample images there of that. Is this section of the magazine is going to be just in black and white advertisements for some different SD Son Goku stuff. A lot of uh, one year war stuff, it looks like. Gundam game things over here, Gundam Collection DX. Look at that, you got a TR6 advanced wound wart there in one to 400 scale, that's pretty awesome. A lot of just little advertisement things here. I'm not exactly sure what all of this is for. Like this is for a card game, card game stuff, and different like video game things, Bandai Pro Shop. There's like a sample of a 00 side story novel here for the Astria, it looks like, Gundam 00P. We'll see Gundam side story, so you got some, it's just all the text, the story of that with uh, some images there, some in black and white, some in color. Top secret development report here for the Astria Type F. It's an awesome design, I love that. And some very cool images here of that build. I'm not sure what this build is based off of though. I would imagine it's based off of the HG. I believe, the HG00 kit of the Astria F-Type. Here's a pretty cool one, the Gundam Abulhul Type F. This one, I know I've, like, don't really know anything about it, but I've seen people mention it from time to time as one that they would like to see Bandai make a model kit of. It definitely looks very cool, very much like a Macross, really, to be honest. Oh, but here we go. Here's some more about that uh, Gundam Astria. So it is based off of the 100 scale version of the kit, it's not the HG, so there you go. I wasn't sure if the 100 scale version was out at the time, but apparently it was, there you go. Very cool kit too, the one on scale version of this. It's not like a master grade, unfortunately, but it is actually really quite nice. So even though it doesn't have all the bells and whistles and full inner frame of being a master grade, as you can see, painted up and detailed up and everything, it definitely can look very cool. That's more double O stuff. And then the Modeler's Cup 2007. Lots of little tiny pictures of people's entries from this Modeler's Cup, apparently. The other feature of this is going to be the Master Grade Gundam version 2.0, which was a recent release apparently at the time. Coming out, it looks like in July of 2008, so right about the same time when this magazine would have been dropping there. So there's a little kind of just two page feature of the 2.0 version of the Gundam. Seems like there would actually be probably be more, but maybe that was in like the previous issue. There was more of a feature on that. Here's the Shin Musha Master Grade and SD there, of course. We got some really nice photography, different poses and stuff for this. Yeah, a lot more features of this. So I would guess like for the Gundam 2.0, there's probably a longer section of the magazine dedicated to that probably in one or two months earlier. Whereas this one has a pretty lengthy feature on the Shin Musha, probably because it was about to come out at that time. Some really cool tips in here for the build for just how to kind of enhance the details of it a little bit, it looks like. So just kind of small things you can do just to kind of refine some of the details around on the kit. It looks pretty awesome, so definitely very cool. You got the Speculum Raigo Gundam, not anything I'm familiar with at all. So this is a 1 in 44 scale scratch build by Takayuki Komatsu. Just based on the design of it and the shield in particular, I can guess this is something from Gundam Seed though. So not a design I'm familiar with though, so if you guys are more familiar with that. So maybe it's from, okay, it's from the Astrays side story there. Got some more stuff over here. Things from the Astrays side story. Some more images of that scratch build, which does look really quite nice. And then we get into some manga here. So we've got a sample of the Astrays manga here in this issue. So there'll be a few pages of that, not as much as like what you would have in like a Gundam Ace uh, issue, which is in almost entirely manga. 
this one's just giving you a little sample and I don't know exactly of which particular issue in that or if this is just like a prequel to that series or what, I'm not entirely sure, but there's some of that. Then we got some SD Musha stuff there and more SD stuff. Now finally we get into the non-Gundam related stuff here with Code Geass or I'm not sure if that's the correct pronunciation for that, but uh, from that series. This is also from Bandai though, right? I think these are also still based on the Bandai model kits. There are some of those, but some pretty cool designs, definitely. It's Super Robot Wars. So this one actually uh, was just coming out as a premium Bandai kit. And I'm not sure if this particular design is exactly the same as what was the premium Bandai version of the HD Altizen that just was recently coming out. This design definitely looks slightly different, but I would guess it's kind of maybe based off of the same design. This being a blue version of the Altaisen, the Altaisen Noct. So yeah, I don't remember what exactly was the name of the premium Bandai version. I just remember that it was a blue version of the Altaisen that was coming out. P Bandai. Some more Super Robot Wars stuff. Pretty cool designs. The Altalian, this is a Korbuke kit here. Not one that I've built, but some more Super Robot Wars stuff. Because at the time, it was basically just Korbukia making Super Robot Wars kits. Bandai wasn't really doing that at that point in time quite yet. This so one, a Black Sarena new kit review. Not one that I'm familiar with, but that's a pretty funky design. Super bulky. And a Neon Genesis Evangelion three years after Anima. So just like a post story, I guess, to Evangelion. Another, not manga, but novel. Novelization here. And you do have some images here for this, I guess. Are some pretty interesting stuff. I don't know exactly what that is, and hopefully you guys can see that well enough, but some line art there uh, from this post-Evangelion story. That's a really cool illustration. That's pre I don't know if I've ever seen that before. That's really wild. Huh, interesting. Okay. So then we get into some more figure things. There's Miku, for you Miku fans out there. The 120 scale fatty uh, Votoms kit there from Bandai. Some more Votom stuff here. Really cool uh, camel pattern painted on this custom one there. That's not the Bandai kit, that is the wave kit, the 124 scale wave kit. Some different armor core stuff here from Kodobukiya. I've built and reviewed that kit a long time ago, well, maybe a couple years ago. Now that armored core kit from Kodobukiya and uh, quite a few armor core things in here. Got a Levatine also. That's the Revoltek Levatine, interestingly enough. A figure of that. Some more figures. Yotsubato figure there. Elgaim, Soul of Iron. All sorts of cool different figures and things. Statues from different mecha anime. The lesser known ones than Gundam. Got some Zoid stuff in here as well. Those look pretty cool. Some of the early HMM series kits from Kotobukiya there. Fantastic in detail and parts. So yeah, we got the Saber Tiger here getting a feature. The Zoids HMM uh, kit there. All these <laughs> steps there, just showing like the different steps of that, I guess, in the construction. That's pretty interesting, but definitely highlights just the complexity of those kits. As I've always said, the one thing that I like about the HMM kits uh, from Zoids is how complex they are. Got some more Zoid stuff here. Very nicely painted and detailed builds of some Zoids HMM kits here. That's pretty awesome. You got the little dung beetle guy there as well. And more of that. These later ones are, I think, the uh, Takara kits, not the Kotobukiya ones, but there you go. And then different anime character figures and things like that. This is where I definitely don't know quite as much about any of these characters, dolls and things like that. I know that's uh, another Vocaloid character. Some uh, different garage kits and things that were being developed, different figures and garage kits of different character figures. It's quite a lot of this, as you can tell. Figma, and just lots of different characters. Just kind of fast forwarding through a lot of this stuff just because I don't really know too much about it. And we're basically just here for the Gunpla, which I think at this point is pretty much done. We have some Super Sentai stuff going on in here as well, of course. Wouldn't be anything anime or Japanese like anime culture related without having some Super Sentai stuff. Looks like somebody made a Gundam Verka Titans test team version of the Gundam as like a costume, a cosplay of the Gundam. That's pretty incredible. And just coming to the end of the magazine, like I said, there's just a lot of other, like there's line barrels of, line barrels of iron, 
lots of stuff here that I just don't really know too much about. And it's just lots of little advertisements for things that were coming out at the time. But there's loads of stuff in here. Even Star Wars and all sorts of random stuff. We're into the back part now, the very back part where uh, it's just all the black and white pages. They're strike witches. So definitely some cool stuff and interesting stuff. Uh, like different model kits, like some of these uh, garage kits and things like that, like I've seen around online. So it's interesting to know that like, oh, those were coming out and featured in a magazine in 2008. Some of these uh, model kits that I just have seen around online for years. Kind of cool to see them in the magazine, just kind of puts them into the perspective as to like when they were coming out and just kind of puts a little bit more of like a framework into like modeling history, you know, when some of these kits and figures and different garage kits and things like that were coming out. So that's a Muv Love stuff in here as well. Uh, bandaged Ray Ayanami. Macross, of course. I haven't really seen too much Macross in this issue, at least that I've been paying attention to anyway, that, it, that I've noticed. Transformers in there as well, a little bit of that. And we have last couple pages here are gonna be a little bit more sample manga here. It looks like, what is it? I'm not too sure exactly though. Ah, Super Robot Wars, OG. There you go. So some Super Robot Wars, OG manga. Interesting. And all of that is going to take us basically to the end here. Last few pages of that and we're at the end. Okay, so there you go, guys. So yeah, that's it. A look back in history to October or August, sorry, 2008. What was going on in the Japanese modeling world at that point? Pretty cool to see the very early days of the rollout of different unicorn kits, how there really wasn't too much quite yet at that point, but that was right at the start when the unicorn series kits started to come out, I guess. And also kind of right in the middle of when a lot of the double O kits were coming out. So pretty interesting, guys. Let me know what are your thoughts down in the comment section below. What was cool to see from here? There's definitely a lot of really cool stuff in this issue. I want to go back later and maybe take a look at some of that stuff in some more detail. Because this is a magazine I've had for a long time. But, you know, not one that I've ever really done anything more than just kind of flip through, basically. But, you know, one that I have in my collection, I should really go through and just kind of try to consume everything in some more detail. Especially all like the little tips and tricks. Like you have some of the sections where it does give you like some different actual like modeling tips and things like that and look the work in progress photos are, are also really interesting to see but thanks guys for checking out the video hopefully that was interesting for y'all and until next time if you guys would like to see more like this i do have a stack of some more older magazines like this that i just have in my collection that i've not made videos on yet so we'll definitely be making some more in the future make sure you subscribe if you want to see more and like the video if you don't mind that would also be greatly appreciated but until next time guys have a great day i'll see y'all later Bye bye